Thank you, Richard. I have been looking forward to this night for weeks. I'm so thankful to, uh, to my good friends and colleagues who organized this and hosted this and brought food tonight. Would you thank all of our hosts for tonight, please? I love you guys. I'm so thankful to those of you who are members of my campaign committee. It is an honor, it is an honor actually to, to have the support of people like Richard Elias and Isabel Garcia and Joel Feynman and so many of you in this room, um, in this courtyard tonight. Um, I'm on a 10,000 mile road trip around the state of Arizona. <laughs> I just, uh, my, 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 uh, my little trip meter just tipped over 4,200 miles. So uh, in six weeks, so we're really moving. And, um, and what I'm doing on this road tour is I'm really trying to hear from people, right? I'm trying to listen to people and I'm going to places, you know, my, my very first stop on my road tour was Cells on the Tana Atham Reservation. And then I went to Ajo and I've been to Yuma and I've been to, to Quartzsite and I've been to the La Paz County Fair and I've been to Kingman and um, I was in Peach Springs last weekend. Do you know where Peach Springs is? <laughs> Peach Springs is, is up on the, um, on the, um, on the, uh, the Hualapai uh, Reservation, way up in the northwest part of the state. There are 287 Democratic votes there. I'm gonna get every single one of them. <laughs> In other words, I'm going to places where people's voices aren't being heard, where people's stories are not being told. I'm going to places where people feel like they're being treated like they're invisible by this state and by this country. In Ajo, I met this, this guy named Jose, who was 75 or so. I mean, he could have been older. Everyone now older than me looks younger than they used to. So I don't know, he could have been 100 for all I know, but he's lived in Ajo his whole life. And they, he told me about the challenges that they face in that, in that town. And he said to me, Kelly, we feel like we've been abandoned by this state. And there are people all over this state in our community who feel that way. So I'm listening. So before I say anything else, I wanna just hear from you, like what are the main things you're concerned about? When you think about this election, this year, and changing this state, what are the top things that come to mind? Just, just shout them out, yeah. Yes, yes. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. Over here. How do we keep voting safe and accessible to everybody? Yes. What else? Quality education. Quality public school education. Yes. Yeah. What else? What's on your mind about this? What's going on? Deportations. Deportations. No more prisons. No more private prisons. No How about no more prisons? <laughs> yes. Out of control border patrol. Yes. What? A <laughs> Comprehensive health care. Yes. Transgender rights. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. This is why I'm running. I jumped into this race because I did not hear the things that we care about being talked about by the other candidates that, that are running. And, and, and these things need to be talked about. These issues need to be on the table and our voices will be heard. Our voices will be heard. So, so I don't, I don't, um, I've never told, I've never told this story publicly and, and I don't, I don't tell it very often even privately, but, but a lot of people have asked me, 
You know, why, like, why do you care? <clears throat> Sorry. So I grew up in this little town uh, called Hammond, Indiana, Northwest Indiana, this little, this little pocket of a community just over the border from the south side of Chicago. And I grew up in this really diverse, um, in this diverse neighborhood. You know, when I was growing up, uh, people would say, I lived on the wrong side of the tracks. That's like where, probably where we all lived. <laughs> and, um, you know, like the, the church that I went to had, uh, had mass in English and in Polish and in Spanish. <laughs> Yay for Spanish mass. <laughs> or Polish, I don't know. And, um, and the street, the block that I lived on, um, everyone who lived on my block, except for my family, were immigrants um, from Mexico. And, um, and they all, except for one, the family, they were all part of the same family. They were all related. And I, it was a wonderful place to grow up, you know. Um, I learned how to swear in Spanish before I learned how to swear in English. And, um, and I would I love to go, you know, to go over, and my best friends were Bertha and Ruben. And I would go over to their house and their old Nana, who I don't know what the name is for like the great, great, great grandmother. That's who it was. She was like 100 years old. And, um, and when she wasn't chasing me with a wooden spoon across the yard, she was feeding me. I would go there and the smells that would come out of the house and the food was so good. And, and uh, you know, they had this little black and white TV and they'd have the baseball game on in the summer and I'd go over and hang out with my friends. And every Christmas, you know, they would give us tamales um, for Christmas. When I was 12, um, my dad was killed in a car accident. And uh, my mom, you know, there were three of us. I was the oldest. Uh, my little brother was two. And we didn't have a lot of money. My mom didn't have a job. Um, my dad worked three jobs to pay the bills. And um, <clears throat> it was really awful. And, you know, the priest came with a, with, a, uh, with a police officer in the middle of the night, knocked on our door. And, and the news spread really fast the next day. And I don't know, sometime that afternoon, the knock started coming on the front door. And our neighbors from all around that block came into my house with um, bags of groceries. And I can remember going through the bags of groceries on the, that were all over the kitchen table and, and in the kitchen and pulling out things like Wonder Bread and cream, cans of cream corn and like this really white food <laughs> that I think they thought we ate. No tamales. No, like I'm like, where's the good food? But there was so much love in those bags. You know, because they were trying to feed us with food that they thought would fill us. And it wasn't the food, it was the love. So I grew up, you know, I grew up in a place and in a family and in a neighborhood where everybody mattered. Everybody. Everybody. Bertha's old gay uncle. I don't, didn't know what the word for it was. You know, everybody. The old great, 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 great Nana, me. And I've spent my whole life trying to bring that to every single thing I do. To bring that to my work, to bring that to my relationships. And everywhere I go, you know, I think I'm bringing something. And what happens is I just get filled up more. I've learned so much from my friends at the YWCA and from people in this community that have honored me with the ability to work with them beside them to try to make this community better. And it's such a beautiful place. And the state of Arizona, you know, not the state, not the state, but the people who are leading the state right now, 
They are not only irresponsible. They are not only incompetent. They are not only unethical. They're just like the meanest people I know. And I think we need to just kick them all out. We just need to kick them all out. So, so I'm so I'm 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 running for governor, and um, and I'm on this tour, and we're up against it. You know, they spent twelve million dollars to get Doug Ducey elected the first time. Twelve million. So we're not going to outraise or outspend them. We're going to outwork them. We're going to outsmart them. We're going to outheart them, and we're going to get every single person that we know to do the right thing this August and this November, and that is to vote for new leadership. Not career politicians, man, they've had their chance, and they have screwed it up. No offense, Richard, except for Richard, except for Richard. I love you, Richard. And he's not a career politician anyway. You know, and, and I'm sick and tired, right, of millionaires and billionaires running things. So, no. <laughs> so, you know, all the stuff that you said you care about, I care about those same things. We're going to fix the public schools. No public money should go to pay for private schools, period. Yeah. You know, instead of giving big tax breaks and tax incentives to big corporations that have their headquarters in some other state or some other country who don't give who don't care about this community at all, instead of giving them tax incentives, let's give tax incentives to places like St. Charles. Let's give tax incentives to all of the wonderful restaurants up and down this street and the locally owned small businesses who are the heart of every single community. You know, if you go to my website, friarforarizona.com, I've got all kinds of policy positions about all kinds of things. And you'll see, you'll see about the things that I care about. And if you know the work that I've been doing at the YWCA, and you know about the work that I've done in community for the last 25 years, you, you, you know about the things that I care about. But the fundamental principle here is that this state should work for everyone that everyone matters, and that instead of politicians that put profit in the pockets of their friends, every policy, every law, every line of every budget should be about making life better for people, for people in this state. So I think that's all I have to say right now. I think that's good. You think that's good, Richard? I'm getting the thumbs up. What's next? What's happening next? Oh, Isabel, I'm glad I had to go first and not after you. It is such an honor to have Isabel Garcia as a member of my campaign committee. Thank you so much.